Welcome along to the Carabao Cup round one draw. Now, there were plenty of exciting moments in last season's competition as Manchester City beat Aston Villa in the final to win their third consecutive Carabao Cup. Can anyone loosen their grip on the trophy next time around? The road to finding out starts here. Uh, 70 EFL Cups will feature in today's draw. Norwich City are one of them, whereas Watford and Bournemouth will join the competition in round two alongside the Premier League clubs who are not competing in Europe. Uh, drawing the balls today is Paul Merson who lifted the trophy with Arsenal back in 1993. Merson, good to see you. We'll chat yeah. about that famous day at Wembley in just a moment. But first, just a quick word on how this draw will be done. As with the previous two seasons, it will be conducted in two sections, a north draw and a south draw, but there are no seeded or unseeded teams. Uh, with current COVID-19 restrictions and in order to keep everyone as safe as possible, we'll mostly be drawing both the home and the away teams. It's a little different from uh, the usual procedure, but I'm sure all of you will understand that safety is absolutely paramount at this time. Uh, so, Merce, let's take a trip back to uh, April the 18th, 1993. You scored uh, one of the goals in a 2-1 winner over Sheffield Wednesday. You picked up the Man of the Match award mm. as well. What are your memories of that day? Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, it was a dream as a kid growing up. I used to play a game called Wembley at the park with my mates and then mm. to score in a cup final, you know, it was, was a dream and it's one of the highlights of my career if I'm being honest. There's no doubt about that. I, I love this trophy. I think it's a big part of our, of our game. And I think now, with, with there not being two legs over the semi-final, I think it opens it up for championship teams as well. I really do. And Man City have got a grip on this, but when there ain't two legs in a semi-final, you know, you never know on a one-off game. So, for me, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a great competition. Come what February, on a Sunday, you put the telly on and every professional footballer watching that will be thinking, if they're not there, will be thinking, I wish I was playing in that. But well, we got there in 1993. You also got there in 1998 yeah. with Middlesbrough. You took Chelsea all the way to, to extra time. But Borough were a second-tier side at the time. Mm. Uh, do you see any championship teams going deep in this competition, maybe even winning it? Uh, I, I do. I give them a chance. I really do. I, you know, when we, when we got in the final, we beat Liverpool over two legs, which was a bit of a miracle, if I'm being honest, with the players that they had. But now, with only one leg, I do give them a chance. You know, and... You know, for me, as I say, come what February, it's what a trophy to win. What a trophy. You know, to play at Wembley is every, every player's dream. So, yeah, I, I do give them a chance, the championship teams, definitely. Mm. Hasn't been done by a team outside the top tier since 1991. Uh, let's move on to the main business of the morning then. We start with the North draw. So, 36 balls will be drawn out of the bowl to complete 18 ties. So, Merce, please give the balls a good stir and get us underway. Here we go. Number 34. Tranmere Rovers, 2,000 runners up to Leicester are at home. To number 15. And they'll take on Harrogate Town, wow. who are featuring for the first time in their 101-year history after they won the National League playoffs last season. Number 10. And that is Crew Alexandra, promoted as League Two runners up last season. We'll play number 18. And they will take on Lincoln City, who've uh, never made it past round four in their history. Number 35. Number 35 is Walsall, one of Mercy's former teams. So we'll be at the Bescott Stadium. We'll play number 30. We'll play number 30, who are Sheffield Wednesday, Ooh. 1991 winners. <laughs> number 26. And that is Rochdale, who took Manchester United to penalties in round three last season. We'll play number 16. And that's Huddersfield Town, who have a new coach in charge. That's Carlos Calberan. Number 25. Preston North End, with Alex Neal in charge. We'll play number 19. And that is Mansfield Town, who finished 21st in League Two. Number six. Bolton Wanderers, twice runners-up in this competition. Ian Everett now in charge. We'll play number seven. Bradford City, the 2013 runners-up after a fantastic run, beating uh, two of them versus his former sides, Arsenal and Aston Village. Mm. I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> number four. Blackburn Rovers, 2002 winners, beating Spurs at the Millennium Stadium. We'll play number 12. And they will take on Doncaster Rovers. 
number 32, and that is Stoke City. Mo Colonial's side will be at home, but who to? To number five, and that is Blackpool, who reached the semi-finals in the inaugural competition. Number 13. Number 13 is Fleetwood Town. Joe Barton has a home draw. We'll play number 36. And they will take on Wigan Athletic, the 2006 runners-up. Number 14. Number 14 is Grimsby Town, three-time quarter finalist in this competition. We'll play number 21. And they will take on Morecambe, who last made it to round three in 2008. Number 20. That is Middlesbrough, one of Paul's former sides, the 2004 winners. We'll play number 31. And they will take on Shrewsbury Town, famous cup giant killers quarter finalist in 1987. Number 11. Derby County will be at home, Philippe Koku's side. To number three. And they'll be at home to Barrow, who won the National League with David Dunn now in charge. Number 29. And that is Scunthorpe United. Neil Cox is their manager. We'll play number 24. And they will take on Port Vale, who missed out on the League Two playoffs by just a point. Number 33. Number 33 is Sunderland, twice runners-up in the League Cup. We'll play number 17. And they will take on Hull City, relegated from the Championship last season. Number eight. And that is Burton Albion, semi-finalist in 2018-19. We'll play number one. And they will take on Accrington Stanley, who beat Nottingham Forest on their debut in this competition in 2006. Number 28. Number 28 is Salford City, who made their debut in this competition last season. We'll play number 27. And they will take on Rotherham United, who are back in the championship. Number two. A Barnsley, Gerhard Schruber side, are at home, but who to? To number 22. They'll be at home to Nottingham Forest, the four-time winners. It's a good looking tie, isn't it? Number 23. Oldham Athletic with Harry Kewell as their manager. We'll play number nine. And they will take on Carlisle United, semi finalist in 1970. Thank you, Mercer. That is uh, the North draw. Some interesting ties there. Uh, some championship sides with some tough tasks. And uh, there are 18 ties, uh, including obviously the likes of uh, Nottingham Forest, four time former winners, Blackburn Rovers, 2002 winners. Let's confirm now. The North Draw in full. So Harrogate Town, they are going to Prenton Park for their first round tie. It is their debut in this competition. More than 100 years of history, they will take on Tranmere away from home. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday are away to a, a lower league opposition in Walsall. Huddersfield, another championship side, also away from home. Preston at home to Mansfield. Bolton against Bradford is another interesting one. Blackburn, another championship side, are at home to uh, Doncaster. Uh, Stoke versus Blackpool and Fleetwood versus Wigan Athletic. Uh, Grimsby uh, against Morecambe as well. Middlesbrough versus Shrewsbury Town. Derby taking on Barrow, who are back in the EFL. Uh, Hull away to Sunderland is an interesting tie. Also, uh, Salford versus Rotherham, who are back in the championship. Barnsley versus Nottingham Forest is an all-championship tie. And Oldham versus Carlisle. Harry Kewell's first game in charge of Oldham. Uh, whilst the balls are, are being reset by our EFL adjudicator, we've got to remove balls 35 and 36 before we go again uh, and do the south draw. So, so what do you make of that, Mercer? Are there any ties that jump off the page for you? Oh, I've got to say Derby against Barra. I've got to. Who would have thought that? Barra playing Derby County. Yeah, phen phenomenal draw. Yeah, you know, to have Barra in the Football League. Yeah, it just, yeah, it just gets it, it get used to. I mean, it's... Phenomenal what they did. And to go and play Derby, one of the biggest clubs in the championship, there's no doubt about that. So, yeah, for me, that's the draw. Harrogate Town as well, away to Tranmere Rovers. I mean, what an occasion that will be for them. It will. And Tranmere seem a good cup team. You know, they always have a go. It's a hard place to go. 
But yeah, and again, Harrogate done brilliant to get into the, just just getting used to it. You know, been well, never been in, have they? None of them. So yeah. for me, yeah, brilliant. Wetting the appetite ahead of the yeah. new season. Well, the balls are reset. The South draw can now take place. 34 balls to be drawn out of the ball to complete 17 ties on the same basis as the North draw. So, Merce, please give the ball to the third. And let's go again. Number four. Uh, number four is uh, Bristol City, semi finalists in 2018. We'll play number 13. And they will take on Exeter City, Ooh. who are at Wembley for the League Two playoff final against Northampton recently. Number 26. Number 26 is Plymouth Argyle, promoted from League Two last season. We'll play number 28. And they will take on Queen's Park Rangers, the 1967 winners, with Mark Warburton in charge. Number 33. And that is Swindon Town. Richie Wellens has a home tie. We'll play number eight. And they will take on Charlton Athletic, relegated from the Championship last season. Number 14. And that is Forest Green Rovers. Mark Cooper's side will be at home. Who will their opponents be? They will play number 17. And they will take on Leighton Orient, who are back in the competition after two seasons away. Number 20. And that is Milton Keynes Dons, who lost in Liv uh, against Liverpool in round three last season. We'll play number 11. And they will take on Coventry City, champions of League One. Number 12. And that is Crawley Town, who reached there in round four last season. They beat Norwich and Stoke. We'll play number 19. And they will take on Millwall, three-time quarter finalists, with Gary Rowett in charge. Number 31. And that is Stevenage, who finished 23rd in League Two in the final reckoning. We'll play number 27. And they will take on Portsmouth, who lost 4 0 to Southampton in round three last season. Number 25. Peterborough United, Darren Ferguson has a home tie. To number nine. And they will take on Cheltenham Town, who lost in the League Two playoff semi finals last season. Number three, Brentford, of course, looking to make up for their Wembley agony, losing to Fulham in the playoff final in the championship. We'll play number 34. And they will take on Wickham Wanderers, who had a very different experience at Wembley. They're into the championship for the first time in their history. Number 22, Northampton Town, more playoff final winners, this time from League Two. We'll play number seven. And they will take on Cardiff City, the 2012 runners-up in this competition. Number 18. Number 18 is Luton Town, Nathan Jones with a home tie. We'll play number 23. And they will take on Norwich City, relegated from the Premier League, now in the Champions. Number two. Number two is Birmingham City with Itor Karanka now in charge of St Andrews. We'll play number six. And they will take on Cambridge United, who beat Brentford on penalties in round one last time around. Number 21. 21 is Newport County, Michael Flynn's side. We'll play number 32. And they will take on Swansea City, the 2013 winners under Michael Loudrup. Number 24. Number 24 is Oxford United, who reached the quarterfinals last season. We'll play number one. And they will take on AFC Wimbledon. Number 29. Reading, previous quarterfinalist, who took Wolves to penalties last season. We'll play number 10. And they will take on Colchester United, quarterfinalist last season, uh, after they beat Palace and Spurs. Number 15. Number 15 is Gillingham. Steve Evans has a home tie. They will play number 30. And they'll be at home to Southend United. Mark Molesley in charge there now. Number 16. Number 16 is Ipswich Town. And they will play the last one. Number 5. And they will take on... 
Bristol Rovers, uh, Ben Garner going to Portman Road. Well, there are some very, very interesting ties there, particularly uh, Brentford against Wickham Wanderers, both these sides in the championship, but as I mentioned before, with very differing experiences uh, in their playoff finals, respectively, Brentford in the championship and Wickham Wanderers to come up from League One, having beaten Oxford United. Let's now confirm that South draw in full. So we've got uh, a tie down towards the west of the country, uh, Bristol City against Exeter, a uh, Plymouth at home to, to QPR, uh, Charlton who were relegated from the championship, they go to Swindon, uh, Forest Green at home to Leighton Orient, MK Dons against Coventry now of the championship, another championship side, Millwall are away from home as they go to Crawley and as you see at the bottom there, Brentford versus Wickham Wanderers. What a task that is for Gareth Ainsworth and co. And Northampton, Playoff final winners take on championship side Cardiff. Luton versus Norwich is also in all championship ties. Uh, Norwich uh, come into the competition at this stage this time around. Birmingham, the championship, are at home to Cambridge. Swansea will travel to Rodney Parade to take on Newport. Oxford United against AFC Wimbledon. Uh, Reading take on Colchester United. Gillingham versus Southend and Ipswich versus Bristol Rovers is an all League One tie. So... Paul Merson, what did you make of that draw? Some intriguing ones there. Yeah, I like, I like the, North, uh, the Newport against Swansea one, the Welsh derby. Uh, and I, I liked Northampton against Cardiff. I think it's, that's a real, could be a real upset, upset there. I think Keith Curl's done a great job and I think that'll be a hard place for Cardiff to go. Yeah, but Cardiff, of course, who, who just missed out on the, yeah. on the playoffs in, in the championship. What, what about... Brentford against Wickham. I mean, you know, obviously we've got Adebayoak in Fenwa who, who, who <laughs> drove Wickham to that final and won it against Oxford. And of course, Brentford, who, who couldn't make it past Fulham in the end. That, that's an intriguing one, isn't it? Cool, not many. Two completely different styles of play. But yeah, I mean, hopefully the stadium's ready and, and, and it's a, a good first game, you know. And who would have thought them two playing each other in the same league this year? It seemed mm. a million miles away, you know, and all of a sudden Brentford miss out. Wickham, well, Wickham for me is a miracle mm. and they go up and they're going to be playing each other in the league and now they're going to be playing in the Carabao Cup. Great tie. Fantastic. Merce, thank you very much Thanks indeed. Very much. Thank uh, so that concludes round one of the Carabao Cup. Uh, selected matches will be broadcast live on Sky Sports. Ties scheduled to be played over the weekend of the 5th and 6th of September. Uh, clubs are able to mutually agree an alternative date prior to the start of the international window, which commences on the 31st of August.